Hey, William, good evening. Come on, don't be, sh evening, don't be shy, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, let's I'm wait. Having dinner. Uh, huh? I'm having dinner. Okay, cool, cool, don't worry. Let's just wait for the others. Okay. Sure, <laughs> let's just wait. Don't worry. Gracias. Welcome, Fernando. Welcome. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Don't worry. Let's just wait a few minutes for the rest. Unless you want to talk to me about something interesting, I don't know. You tell me. Uh, I wanted to talk about something, but it's yes, interesting. But about the class. Sure. Tell me about about the um section four the the homework on I think it is four point nine no 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 three point something I three point five yeah yeah three point five let me see if they already corrected it because I I have reported it like three times but I don't know we'll see don't worry yeah okay. it's just um there's a uh, formula error and it's not accepting any answers, not even the right ones that they have because I, I can see the, the answers, right? So not even the right answers is not taken in. Okay. Yeah, I know. Let me see. And um, when are we supposed to finish the final exam? Because I think this is the last week, right? Uh, we are finishing on Tuesday. Today's our 22nd class, 22nd class. So okay. 23rd, 24th, 25th on Tuesday. We finish on Tuesday. I'm expecting you to have everything done by Monday. Okay. So yeah, to give me the chance of uploading all the grades next day. Okay, thank you. Sure, sure. Let's see. Module six, section three, homework 3.5. It's just let me just show this. So <clears throat> see, I, I already have all the answers. Let me see if it is taken. Yeah, still. Staff debug info, trace back. This is the error you're getting, right? I was I got the error like the Lo siento, no uh, se puede analizar la fórmula. Uh -huh, that one. Yeah. yeah, I already reported this issue. Um, I'll go ahead and report it again. Oops. So they can tell us what's going on. Um, it's not usual, I have to say, for the platform to give this sort of error. Um, ba -ba 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 other than that, how was your day? It was decent. Decent? Yeah. <laughs> For a Thursday? Yes. What's your heaviest day of the week? Monday. I have like the whole day in meetings, just meetings and meetings. Every week? Mm. Yeah, mo Monday uh, and Tuesday, because on Tuesday we meet with the, um, like the people who are in charge of the um, management system. So they are like, well, this month we're going to be working on this uh, and this. The and this and projections. This. Yeah. And... So so on Tuesday I know that I will be like pointed pointed out that I haven't finished something or things like that. And why? I'm sorry? And and saying why you haven't finished a task. Yeah. What yeah, are your or, plans or, to or, or getting or just getting more 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 tasks? But do you do you um propose a solution or something or, or they they go ahead and that you know you know what no, uh, you're no, I'm this. supposed to I'm supposed to to propose solutions hmm. 
I always expected and taught my employees to not not just show up with a problem, but with a possible solution, ideas to solve the problem from their perspective. And if it was a um, a conflict, a problem between two or more employees, uh, then I had to listen to both sides or all the all the parties involved before we took a decision. That's very important. You can make a lot of mistakes if you don't have these things in mind. Let's see, I already reported the problem again. We have already started. So yeah, today is our 22nd class. Um, and we're done on Tuesday. By Tuesday, we should be done and you will be graduated. Um, have you heard anything about the TOEFL preparation? Yeah. What is it about? How long does it last? Oh, uh, it's about a month and it's only from 8 to 9 p.m., I think. Oh, just one hour a day. 8 to 9. God, I'm always working at that time. That's it bad for me when I go to the office. One hour. Mm -hmm. It's bad for me when I had to go to, to the office. The office. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. What is it about? Who's, who's stitching the TOEFL thingy? But I think I'll put my hands on that because I need it. I need that preparation. Have you heard of any other insta for courses that you would like to take? No, I, I always put in the in the survey mm -hmm. that I, I interest in in courses about programming, but I never had a, an offer or an answer for that. Oh, yeah. We don't. We don't have programming. We have Excel, uh, marketing, digital marketing, English, and I don't know what else. Okay. So how many are we tonight? We are so far nine. In Liana, welcome. Thank you, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Are you tired? Very tired. <laughs> Do you rest on Saturdays and Sundays? Kind of, because I have to do all the things that I that I can do in my house during the week. So I have to clean. Wash you know clothes. what? I did that yesterday, and man, because yesterday was was your Sunday, but yeah, you that for me. <laughs> Yeah, but it was interesting to to realize that I can still, I can still do everything, and by everything I mean, my house is big, and the bigger the house, the more home church you will have. Yeah, that's for sure. And thank God, uh, I, I, this is something that I loved. You know that I like doing stuff. Like if I feel, for example, I'm I'm getting a headache because I'm missing a. a an electrical outlet right on my left. I only have one on my right here where I have put the, the office and I have a fan. So the fan cord, the power cord is going through the window onto my room to get plugged. So <laughs> I need a, a another thing, you know, outside of the room. And that those are the kind of things. If you go through my house, you will find many of these outlets that I have plugging is like, there's an outlet on this side of the wall, so I put another one on the opposite side, and I just put a hole. <laughs> I just drill a hole. <laughs> That's it. Oh, my God. I don't know. Those kind of things. My dad used to tell me sometimes, hey, you know what? Why don't you hire an electrician or a plumber to do the things you need to do at home? And I go like, eh. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to, yeah. <laughs> the only thing that I, I don't deal with is the underground plumbering. The, under, the underground plumbing that's too much no, that's, yeah. and it's disgusting I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> it's too much 
And well, anyhow, nice conversation. We're gonna have a very short, a chip chat. I'm gonna write a question before I do the list. I'm sorry, hold on. Um, if you were to move, um, Okay, I just wrote the question that we're gonna discuss for a few minutes, just so you can bring these ideas out and you're gonna love that topic. I don't know why, but I, everybody gets excited about that question. So we'll see it. Really quick, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Thank you. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Not here yet. Oh, yeah, there, there he is. Yeah. Hi, Fernando. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present teacher. Good. Don't forget your camera so you can see your face. Gracia Elizabeth Diaz Vasquez. Present. Thank you. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Excellent. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Excellent. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Juan Miguel Bran Mejia. If Juan Miguel comes back before Tuesday, he's going to have to go through, you know, a full description of what he lived in the States in order to make it through this course. What do you, th what do you say? <laughs> At least an hour talking. Narrating. Okay, Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Thank you. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. There she is. And William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. I thought you said you were having dinner. Are you getting the dinner? Are you going to the Pizza Hut or something? Yeah. I'm going <laughs> home. Oh, okay. Okay. So you have dinner at work and then dinner at home. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. <laughs> That's cheating, actually, right? You know? Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, where's Ana Claudia? There she is. Oh, oh my God. And yeah, I got her on the attendance. Okay. So the question that I have for you, I was watching a video. And honestly, I felt like... Hmm, I shall go to that country. I shall just go ahead and move to that country. Give me just 10 seconds. Okay, sorry. My father tends to forget that I teach at night. So I was saying, I was watching that video, you know, it's amazing. Uh, everybody knows about that country, but it's getting more immigrants. It's calling, uh, there's a recall, let's say, for immigrants to move to that country. I'm going to say it at last. It's giving a lot of employment opportunities. It, you don't need to speak English in full. Uh, a basic level will be enough and so many other um, okay, benefits that they offer. So if you were to move to another country, which one will it be and why? Would you go alone or with your whole family? Okay, so I'm just gonna give you 10 minutes, just 10 minutes, no, no more. Okay, it's 8.15 right now at 8.25, we come back here. I just want, I'm just going to split you in two groups. Is that nobody, I mean, many, Many agents, I'm sorry. Many students are with their cameras off. So please discuss this in groups and come back with your conclusions, okay? Everybody must agree in one country. What about that? Okay, let's see if you can agree with one country to move. Let's see.
Okay, I'm fine. Excellent. What country will we choose? What country do you like? Uh, I know you like Germany because uh, there are some some relative that lives in, in Germany. Yes, but uh, the other country I like is um, Guatemala. Ah, Guatemala, but Guatemala is the same as Salvador. In some in something it is, but in other is different. Yes. I, I I think in my in my opinion is only the the weather that is the, maybe the. No, the 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 thing is more cheaper than El Salvador. <laughs> But uh, oh. yeah, it's cheaper if you earn like in El Salvador, but if you live in Guatemala, you earn like uh, mm. it's the same. It's uh, some relative, I think. I don't the, know. It's a, uh, I think it's more opportunity in, in Guatemala to grow up in economics or other education. Yes, I know, but, but but my my brother live in lived in Guatemala, yes. but it, he died now. But he in, when he lived in in Guatemala, he have a, a lot of money. In your in his business, yeah, and and, and now he, he passes away. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and the, the company is belongs to to whom? Well, it's a the the it did a, a a small business, but a is a I don't know what to say in in Spanish in English, but it's a piñatería. When, when, and he he earned a lot of money selling piñatas. Made and selling pi piñatas. Yes, yes, making when, and selling. And then, yes. when, who really? Her, her wife together. Oh, and, 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 and how about the wife? Is she still alive or? Yes, yes, she ah, is still okay. alive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. well, yeah. we have Germany. I don't know. Norway, <clears throat> because the, the, the fjords, the fjords are beautiful, the economy as well, and they have... Too in... much taxes or what? Sorry? <laughs> Too much taxes? Because... The first thing I do when I visit the country, the first thing I do is to ask for the, the taxes. And I was so surprised in this last trip in Dominican Republic, they, there is a 28% of tax. Unbelievable for me, but... But Thailand has like 33% of taxes, I think. Mm -hmm. That's like the highest one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And well, Norway is besides Sweden and Finland, uh, like you have Europe here, and here is Norway and Sweden. Mm. Yeah, it's a um, country, Nordic, Nordic, I guess, Nordic yeah. country. You know, they. Beautiful country. <laughs> they yeah. Which land? They, they got is Odin. <laughs> 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 And what they, do they speak? Which language they speak? Uh, it's uh, Norway. No, it's, they the, had a, language. a known language, but I, I don't know how. What is the name? Uh, okay. What is the name of the language? Okay. Well, it would be interesting to learn <laughs> that language. So we need to present a country as a group, right? Yeah, like pick a country among us all. Whatever of these two you mentioned, German or North. Hi, Norway. Yes, my British. Norway. 
Which one? Mm. <laughs> Maybe we can go with Norway and they speak Romani, Scandoromani, and Norway, Norwegian. Yeah. Norway, Norway. Norwegian. Norwegian. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, no, no, Noruego. No. <laughs> Is this the country where all these movies are uh, made? Uh, like like the beautiful movies? settings? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's Norway. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no? Interesting. <laughs> have you seen have you seen the series The Vikings? No. I ha I've heard of it, I but did. I haven't watched it. Okay. All series has a really good views from mm -hmm. Norway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good okay. series. Mm -hmm. Netflix, I guess. I don't yep. watch Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. I don't watch Netflix. <laughs> In fact, I don't watch television. Why? Amazing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, uh, one of these days, a friend of mine told me, What? How, how come you are? Not a normal person that you watch all these series and you take what they you know. <laughs> do another things. <laughs> oh my god. Mm. Okay, let's talk about that country, North Korea. A good thing is that they have an universal health care. Yeah, and and they they. Like health system and education system is one of the best. But and how much you say of taxes? So or taxes they have because all of this is involved. I mean, they have good programs because you pay hmm. high rent, high taxes. Let me see. It doesn't thirteen point six. Oh no, sorry, that was another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they have strict rules on immigration. So oh they have strict rules on immigration. Uh, strict rules, like yeah. please tell me one <laughs> that you cannot I don't get know, a job because... until one year. I guess you know. I have a friend that she went and asked for. How do you say when people ask for asilo político? Political asylum. Political asylum. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. So she was a, a, a friend. She's a friend and she's a worker, but she re, she traveled to Spain and then she asked for that for that thing and for Belgium. And the first thing they did it was put her, they put her and her daughters on a place like a I can tell it's a, like a shelter. They suffer a lot because there was no um, individual bathrooms. So it, it was so hard. And they must live right there like like uh, it's a kind of orphan or something like that. It's, it was an old business. They were there like around eight months or one year because they must learn the language first. And they had six hours of grammar or in order to learn the language. Now they, after one year, they went through steps. What I'm talking this about is because it's hard to to go to those countries. I guess you can get a job like around one or two years. So we're traveling all of us to know.
Okay, so group number one, David, Dora, Francisco, Jarvin, Luis, Wendy, and William. Convince me, where should we move? Where are we traveling to? Definitely. It, was, uh, Undefinitely. For, it was difficult for us because uh, there are so many options and, and uh, we don't agree with uh, a specific country. Dora likes Germany and likes Guatemala. Uh, Luis Albert likes uh, UK. Uh, William likes uh, Norway. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> he 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 want to wear the 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 the, the helmet and and the and the <laughs> all know. the all the Vikings outfit. <laughs> okay, the Viking outfit. Okay, that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like uh, Netherlands, but in the time of the of the good weather, when the days are long, is uh, between May and, and June. The the the, Come on. the days are long, and the and the you can stay awake until uh, with the the sun of light. You can stay awake in, in, in every time, but with the sun of light until uh, night ten and. There is a uh, like, uh, but in the other time, yeah, like November, and the in the at, at three o'clock, there are there are no Zoom. <laughs> it is awesome. difficult. And uh, well, we can. Uh, uh, Dora have uh, relatives in Germany, have relatives in in Guatemala, and have a, a enterprise. <laughs> oh no, no, a brother of. <laughs> Of her have a, a company in Guatemala. Mm -hmm. Steve mm -hmm. they have her friends in, in UK, in Spain. But uh, sorry, teacher, we can make an agreement. We are bad, bad uh, in negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. Okay, well, it's not a negotiation. It was just a matter of agreeing or disagreeing, <laughs> but you didn't consider something. Let's see if the other uh, group considered those other facts, okay? Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> among Taxes. others, among others, yes. <laughs> Taxes. Uh huh. Okay, we chose Norway. Norway. Uh, wow. Yeah, we were talking about. Um, like the quality of life that the countries offer to the people that wants to live there. And we, well, Gracia mentioned about the um, international, international what, Gracia? Uh, or, or what was like something like about the, the health? So a healthcare system, they have a uh, twenty-two percent taxes, but they have a very good healthcare system. Uh, yeah, that mm. a very um, good system in education too. And yeah, we agree with that. Well, I, based on I, these two I, factors, I that, that, yeah. So it, it regarding health, uh, the health is system is it free? I think it's free, right? It's a free free health system. Yeah, and it, it, the taxes. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. But but well, I, mean, I mean the way you pay taxes, you earn money as well. If you are a citizen, that's what I heard. <clears throat> of course. But how long it takes in order for you to get a permit uh, like a permission to work? Grass has said it's like around difficult. after three years. Three years. Yeah. Yeah. And, so uh, you can get a permit every year, but then you can become a citizen after three years. So, Norway, right? Mm -hmm. They're not part of this agreement, uh, this act where, no, that's that's just with British. Um, the United Kingdom has this. I heard from uh, from someone from London that I don't know if they were considering this act or they approved it. The Parliament approved it that you had to be at least from a third generation of um, uh, what. British, British third generation in order to become a citizen. It's not that easy anymore. So you have to have relatives from Great Britain or, you know, English people if you want to leave 
permanently in 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 London, you know, in, in the United Kingdom. That's what they said, but I don't know if they approved it or it is the way it is. Okay, but these are not the countries that I was thinking about. I was I saw a video and I'm I'm gonna share it. I save it for later because it's very interesting. Um Canada is opening a lot of job positions where you don't need to to have papers, you know, legal papers. They they guide you through the whole process here. Um, in Latin America, you know, they guide you through the whole process in order to become a citizen and you can move with your whole family. They pay you to move in. And there was another country where you can just move and they give you $90,000. But a condition is you have to live in an antique house. You have to restore the house and move there permanently with your family. But th these are very small Oh, that's part of the video as well. It's a very small, um, very, how how do you say this? Very uh, pretty far away place, you know? No, it's a sketch one. Sketch one, sketch one. Learned it. <laughs> that's, a, uh, that's a province. By the way, general culture. Did you know that in Canada, there are no states like in the United States? Yeah, yeah, Claudia, Claudia. I mean, you have to know. Yeah, <laughs> there, are, there are provinces, provinces, and one of them is Saskatchewan. You have Quebec, Montreal, right? Um, Manitoba, Saint Albert's Island. I don't know yeah. British Columbia. I mean, there's a lot, but there are places where, I mean, almost there's not much population. It's a very small town. And they're trying to be to get these places more population. As David said, it's very cold as part of the years, but the payment is good. You can work with wood. They teach you how to work on farms, um, harvesting hens, chickens, eggs, whatever. And it's amazing. I don't know. I've always admired Canada, actually, since I was a kid. They used to play a series here in El Salvador of, uh, how do you say guardabosque in English? Woodkeeper, right? A woodkeeper. No, <laughs> no, I can't remember. He was someone from La Montada de Canada. I can't remember. It was a theory. This guy was a an officer, or, or an officer. A ranger. Avenger. Ranger. Uh, ranger. A ranger. Yes, yeah. but it's it's like forest ranger, something like that. And and he had a dog, and so it was a very good theory. He he moved to the states, I think, or I don't know, and he had good. He was an investigator without being it, you know. I can't remember. I'll find out. But I loved that series as a kid, and I dreamed about moving to Canada because of the beautiful landscapings and everything. Norway has amazing landscapings. And this story, this series that Fernando mentioned, uh, Vikings, if you haven't watched it, go ahead and watch that on Netflix. This is an ad brought to you by me. It, it's an amazing series. And the way that starts, you know, it, it, it opens your eyes to a different way of seeing things. We were col colonized or whatever you want to call it by Spain. So, but these guys were conquering, conquering a lot of territory just from where they were departing from that part of, of Norway, which is still there. The, the little town is still there. It's amazing. Okay, so hope you like the topic. I think it's good from time to time to have a different topic and, and have you talking, bringing more vocabulary, observations, feedback, little feedback, not too much. I'm not going to bother you with this tonight. So really quick, you say daughter, daughter, daughter. Remember, there is no R in English. So you have to say daughter. You don't say money, money, mm -mm. money, mm -hmm. money. It's like saying Monica and just remove the car. Okay, money. 
Money. That's it. Money. Okay. And how he passed. And now he passes away. No, he passed away. And he passed away. And now he's passed away. Which you, can, you can say that. And now he is passed away. Again, yesterday we heard some of the passive voice. And now he he is passed away. Which we sorry. Okay. Which language they speak? What are we missing here, Ana Claudia? Do they speak? Which, which, language, language, they which speak? language do they speak? Easier. What's their language? Mm. Sounds better. I have a friend that she went to. I had a friend that she went to Australia. I had a friend who went. I don't need that. You know, but we're translating from Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I, ha I have a friend who moved or went. I had a friend who moved to or went to. Okay, good. That's all. Um, so moving on to tonight, we have to finish a little bit of a topic we had pending yesterday. On your page 29, the first, I, what, what should I do first? I should go through this first. Okay, let's go with the little presentation that I didn't do yesterday because of your presentations, which by the way, did we finish? We did, right? Yeah. Okay. So tonight, we're going to finish yesterday's topic about confusing verbs. How do you say this? How do you pronounce this one? Raised. 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 <laughs> okay. Raised. Rice. And the other one? Rice. 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 Okay. So, yeah. The That's rice you eat. <laughs> Same pronunciation, <laughs> a homophone, totally, uh -huh. totally. That's a homophone. Okay, what's the what does ESL stands for? Don't remember, student for second language, something like that. Close. English. Ah, English. Second, second language. language. English as a second language. Very good. So learning English can be challenging, especially with confusing verbs like race and rice. Let's. Move on and see what's going on with these two words. Easy. Raise. Think about lifting something, especially your hand. It's very common to hear it in that context. Rise. To move upwards or become higher in position. The sun rises in the east. In the east. To lift something or cause it to move upwards. Can you raise your hand, please? This is just a little resume of yesterday. Resume, sorry. How to use them correctly. Keep an eye on this. And I'm going to challenge some of you that are pretty uh, clever on this sense on grammar. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Gracia, help me with the first one. Direct objects. Direct objects. Race requires a direct object, while rice does not. Example, she raised her hand versus the sun rises every morning. Okay, thank you. So she raised her hand as a direct object. Where is the direct object there? Uh, the object will be hand, her hand. Her hand, right. Now that object, it's direct or indirect? It's direct. Direct. It's a direct object. Okay. Wait a minute. My screens are playing games with me. There we go. Sorry. Let me just a minute. Everything moved to one screen because my screen went up. My screen went off. Okay. What are we? Here we are. Okay. So, thank you. And the sun rises every morning. That sounds like a direct object. An indirect object will be something like that sounds like if you were talking about it twice on the sentence, right? So she raised, what did she raise? Her hand. Okay. The sun, I can simply replace the song with a noun being it, a pronoun, I'm sorry, it. It rises every morning. Okay. Next, Liliana, transitive, intransitive verbs. Oh my God. 
transitive and transitive verbs. Raise is transitive, meaning it requires an object, while rise is intransitive and does not. Example, he raised the flag versus the price of goods is rising. Okay. So there's no object with rise. There is a subject, not an object. Does that make sense? Yeah. And again, how do you identify that? You can replace this subject with a pronoun. The price of goods is rising. How do you replace the price of goods? Come on, advanced six. What subject pronoun replaces the price of goods? It. It. It sounds like it, right? Because you're thinking about countables, uncountables. Hmm. But one question, is that in plural or singular? Plural. Plural. Okay. Am I talking about the price or the goods? Mm, the price. The price. We're talking about goods because we need a pronoun for goods. Yes, because you're talking about pricing, mm -hmm. and remember, rising is is like in it, it it involves. How can I say this? Uh, when you say raise or rise, remember, the main context typically is talking about money. So it's like when you, you say um, in Spanish, están subiendo. You want to affirm what somebody told you about, hey, está subiendo el precio de las cosas. Sí, están subiendo. Huh. Yes, they are rising. Yes, they're rising. Price of goods is rising. I don't know, that's my point of view. What do you think? Okay. Last one, we talked about passive voice yesterday, a few days ago, I don't know. Who can tell me about passive voice? Ana Claudia? No? I remember I saw it in the class, but I don't remember how to explain it. No, not explain it, but in this context, just read what it says. And ah, mm -hmm. sorry. <laughs> okay, the passive voice. I'm sorry, let me just do this. One moment. <clears throat> okay, only rice can be used in the passive voice. Example, the flour was raised by the soldier. Raced. Raced. Raised. <laughs> okay. Raised. Raised. Uh -huh. Right, right. Okay. Only raised can be used in the passive voice. Example, the flag was raised. By the soldier. By the soldier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it could be very, I will make a mistake on this. Isn't the passive voice was risen by the soldier? But now I know. No, no passive voice. Where is the passive voice? The verb to be, mm -hmm. no matter, you can conjugate it or not, and that will determine what grammar tense you're using. But the main rule is there has to be the verb to be and um, the past participle of the verb. Mm, okay. That simple. Uh, most part of the times you don't need a object. Okay. You could simply say here, the flag was raised. Okay. Who raised it? It doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good, good, good. You may use that um, without even noticing, I'm sure. Okay. Common mistakes, incorrect usage with nouns and verbs. It's common to misuse the verbs with nouns. Examples. I'm sorry, did you hear somebody crying? No? Okay, thank you. 
he's on my back on the patio because we have visitors. I'm getting, he's getting desperate and, I, and he's getting me desperate. No, but you have a but, good microphone because. Mm -mm. Yeah, it's the headsets. Are, they cancel the noise, I guess. Oh, okay. No. You heard that, right? Okay. <laughs> Don't tell me you didn't. No, really? No. no. Okay. He, he's holding. I don't know my, 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 my. You have dogs, right? My classmates, huh? Okay. No, I don't know about my classmates. Again, I don't know about my classmates. I, no, I don't know if my classmates hear something. But yes, that's the way you say it. Repeat. I don't know about my classmates. I don't know about my classmates. About my classmates. Uh-huh. Okay, good. Do I need to use about? That's the best way to do it. I don't know because the other way is too long. I don't know if my classmates hear it. Hear something. Uh-huh. It's the same thing. Okay. It's common to misuse the verbs with now. <laughs> okay. For example, rise. I'm sorry. Yeah, I made a mistake. Uh, example, raise a son. Mm. And verbs, example, rise up the stairs. Raise up the stairs. Interesting. I have never used that. In, in a real context. Go race up the stairs. Go race up the stairs. Go upstairs, I say. That's different. Okay, mixing up the two. Many people confuse race with rise using them interchangeably. Interchangeably. Mm. Number three, not following object verb agreement using the wrong form of the verb depending on the subject verb agreement. An example, the price the price raise instead of the price rises. So which one is right here? Is that the last one, the price rises? The price rises, that even sounds better, right? And that's my only advice. If you feel you're getting confused, don't worry. Listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. You are not saying it's calling for you. No, just listen to yourself, guys. What? How do you sound using either one of them? Okay, so let's see if you can practice this. Let's fill in the blank. Let's see. Complete the sentence with either raise or rise, depending on the context. You can use matching exercises. And, and this is what will help you improve in this topics. You can fill in the blanks, matching exercises or inter interactive lessons, which is what we're doing. Let me see. And that's all. That's all. This is a very short um, um, grammar topic. Now, in order to put it in practice per your request, or I'm sorry, in support's request, there is an exercise on page 23, exercise number six. I'm just going to split you for a few minutes so you can do it along and find out which one goes better on each paragraph. As simple as that. I already did it. Uh, it's OK. You have to do it on the class. I'm sorry. OK, um, so let's recreate the groups. We're going to do three. Please don't stay here. Everybody must join their breakout rooms, OK? Let's go. And don't think that I'm doing nothing. I have to take notes of your pronunciation, your areas of improvement, so I'll be there. Page 23, let's go. Please send me the invite again. I don't know what I click. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, you're gonna receive two, so don't pay attention to the first one, okay? Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, thank you.
Okay, Wendy, um, Jose Osmini, hey, teacher, you I hear switched me? To... Yeah, you're using two I devices, right? I to another device, so I don't know if you, yep. so it... I don't know if you can send me the, the invite again. Oh, sure. Uh, let me see, where did I put you on the other device? Okay, there you go. It's about it's about affect or effect, right? Exactly. Underline the most appropriate word to complete these statements below. Effect or affect. Premature scaling brings about. it was an it was in rice and rice and rice. Mm -hmm. No, rice no, and rice. This one is in the platform, I guess. Yeah, it's the same for the platform. But premature scaling brings about the most part out. I think in the first one is effect. My bad. That's not the one. Ah. Well, we did this before. It's one. Is there, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. The, the one we should mm -hmm. be practicing. <laughs> I'm not in love. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando, for noticing in because the teacher is kind of sleeping right now. <laughs> no, no. I'm not in love. <laughs> Only three classes. So no teacher. Only three classes. Just three more classes and that's it. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> My wow. bad. It's just that I was solving the other problem with the exercise 3.5 and it's solved. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah, Can but not, take it at the don't end do of it. Class? Yeah, at the end of the class. Okay. With Let's it. See. Yeah, uh, let me broadcast the message right now. And the, uh, the concern about the effectiveness of those impact entrepreneurs who claim it is too difficult to make sure that they really. Mm, Fernando, for me, the first one should be racing. No, the concern about the effectiveness of those impact entrepreneurs between me. Okay, we have two. The third one. The third one is living star standards that have rise reason. After the intervention, the second one I think is rising. Rising, rising. Yes, because it doesn't have an title for it. Yes. So social After the intervention of a social business, your measure of the impact of of social business. And number okay. four. Number four. Since government funding for social enterprises is not. It's not rising. Always entrepreneurs need to decide exactly what chain it is they want to achieve in order to better focus. Thanks, Governor Fondi. Ah, no, there is the another one because he's not talking about the entrepreneurs, he's talking about no. their funds. Uh, to the same exactly. Yes. Exactly. Rice number what five. Chain? The number of mature Chinese, mature Chinese social enterprises. enterprises older than five years rise. So, well, mm, yes. This is yes. Rose. We have an an of 16% in 2011, 2020, 2011, 2, 30, 8 in 2012. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in this case, it will be? Mm, I think it's rose, rice, but uh, in the form rose. Oh, what is that past? It's in past. Yes, it's in past. It's in past. It changed from 
patros de nombre, macho. Oh. Wait, wait, what? I, I, I get a loss. Lives rising is with the not an dated object. Rice, race is with an dated object. And in this case, we are talking about the number of mature Chinese social enterprise. In this case, is rose, yes, you're right. And the last one, successful, successful social. social. You can, you can you read the, the sentence, Francisco. Raising? Okay. So number four says, since government funding for social enterprises is not uh, raising or rising, entrepreneurs need to decide exactly what change it is they want to achieve in order to better focus on uh, focus investment. So you mentioned, Francisco, that you will pick um, Yes, I'll stand up for just one minute, okay? Okay. Number one, this is not right. It's not. I will pick rising because it does not need an object. It's not rising. Rising. It's government funded for social enterprises. It's, it's not rising. It's exactly what change it is they want to achieve in order to build business. It's not rising. Yep. Rising? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you agree, Dora? Yes. Okay. Um, Dora, would you like to read uh, sentence number five? The number of mature China social enterprise older than five years rises or rose from 50% in 2011 to 38% in 2012. Thank you. So, which one should we pick? So, yes, Rose. Rose. Yeah, I agree with Rose as well. Because it does not need, need an object. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ileana, would you like to read number six? Yeah. Successful social entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs recommend all nascent impact entrepreneurs to raise rice the standards to report the impact of their business to increase their donors. He I think is a social uh -huh. to raise. Yeah, it, it needs an object. Raise the standards. Raise mm -hmm. the standards. Okay. Okay, we're done. To check. Ace. So I'm going to send it to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, let me just check if the last, oh no, you were the last group actually. Then we, okay. Yeah, let's go back.
Okay, so let's see the results of your exercise. I haven't done it. I'll be honest with you. So let's see. Let's underline the most appropriate word to complete the sentences below. So um, just grab this thing and move this in here. Okay. The concern about the effectiveness of those impact entrepreneurs who claim it is too difficult to measure what they're doing is racing or rising? Racing. Is yeah, the have. second one, rising. The second one, rising. Why? Rising. Because it's not knees and daily dog yet. Again, David? It's not need uh, daily dog yet because uh, <laughs> uh, what is rising <laughs> It is a, a, a difficult structure of, of syntax of the sentence. Uh -huh. but, the con but the concern about the effectiveness of those impact claim is to Let, Let's recall the information. Um, when you talk about the sun, the sun rises or raises? It's a... Uh, Everybody? Rice. Rice is right, okay. Yes, right. So right. We're, we're, think about <clears throat> this like this. Um, all of this is your subject. I mean, everything that goes before the verb in this, before the verb to be, yes. is a subject. And you can replace it with it. It's racing. It yes. is racing or it is rising? Rising. Rising, right. Second one, yes. Yes. So, yes, you are right. Do we all agree? Yeah. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it is not necessary to raise or rise the number of investors in the social impact business to begin assessing the impact of the business in its early days. To raise, because in this case, we have a dilated object. You know what? You got a base there. Do we all agree with that? There's an object in this sentence? Yes, because the bird, the option of the bird is directly over the number of investors. Okay. Yes, Ileana is nodding. Steve is nodding as well. Yes. Where, where's Gracia? I lost her. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, number three. Leaving standards that have raised rising after the invention of a social business in a community is a clear measure of the impact of such business. Right. Rising. 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 Why not raised? <coughs> I mean, grammatically, is that right? Is that the past and the past participle? Is raised a uh, regular verb or irregular? It's an irregular verb. Can you conjugate it? Okay, no, it's regular. <laughs> yes, I know that because I get confused too. That's why I'm, I'm, um, yeah, I'm doing that. Yeah, race, race. Yeah, but it does not have an object. Reason. Mm -hmm. It has reason. It does. Reason or reason. But in this case, you're using the past. I'm sorry, present perfect. Let's see. Present Living perfect. standards that have risen. Have risen. Be careful because rise is very confusing. Confusive. Um, is it so nice, rise. Like passive voice? Uh huh. Rise, rose, risen. We thought rise, in that way that rose, it was a passive voice, but there risen. is no better to be, right? No, no, no. This is just present perfect. Uh huh. Living standards that have risen after the invention of a social business in a community is a clear measure of the impact of such business. I'm going to stop here for a second. 
mind this sentence. Mind this sentence because that's the topic for tonight is about how to measure the impact of your social business. I mean, what is the importance of measuring the impact? Okay, let's go with number four. Since government funding for social enterprises is not raising or rising, entrepreneurs need to decide exactly what change it is they want to achieve in order to better focus investment. This is so interesting. Uh -huh. You did it before. Rising. rising. Yes. It's not rising. Exactly. It isn't raised rising. Uh -huh. Okay. The number of mature Chinese social enterprises older than five years raised rose from 15% in 2011 to 38% in 2012. Rose. Rose. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. Number of mature Chinese social enterprises older than five years rose, raised. What do you think? Anybody else? Think of the entrepreneurs raised. Raised because it's an adjective, the number. Number. Mm -hmm. So what, raised, not rose? No, but the better is uh, focus on the number of mature Chinese. Right, so object, verb. So I what? Rose. Rose? It rose. Yes. Gracias? Rose. It rose. Yes. Yeah, you have a, no, a subject, then the verb, and then the complement. Simple. Now oh, that's past. Okay, successful social interpreters recommend all nascent impact interpreters to raise or rise the standards to report the impact of their business to increase their donors. Raise. To raise. The standards. Raise. This is an infinitive, right? Raise. Raise, yes. Okay. Successful social entrepreneurs recommend all national impact entrepreneurs to raise the standards. It's like yeah, raise, I raise your hand. This, this is a clear example of raise your hand. Yes. Raise your hands. And there's yes. a direct object. Raise okay. the standards, yes. Uh-huh. The standards is the object. The okay. Standards. Mm -hmm. Good. So that was it for that topic. Let's move on to explaining the importance of measuring the social impact of a social business. When I was in the university in 2010, 2011, uh, one of the basic um, subjects on the career was um, the project development, project management, I'm sorry, project management. And the guy who was teaching us um, this subject at Gavidia was, um, <laughs> I just remember his last name. His last name was Moreno. And he was brown. <laughs> <laughs> it's not discrimination, but he used to make fun of it. You know, guess my last name. Guess my last name. What's my last name? And we're like, I don't know. Yeah, who will know, right? Oh, it's Moreno. Ha, 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 ha. We're like, uh, okay. <laughs> so anyhow, I just remember his joke. He was a nice guy. He was very young, to be honest with you. And he looked like Francisco Flores. So we used to play with him. Hey, where, aren't you... Flores, you know, your last name? No, it's more than okay. This guy taught us a lot about, oh, and he used to work at Medix. He works at Medix, or I don't know, as a technician. And um, when we reached this level of understanding on how to start a project, a social project, develop it, and put it in action, the conclusion of that subject of, of management, uh, project management was to create a real thing, you know, do something for our community. So we went to El Peñón, 
El Peñón, where, where is it? Um, San Ignacio. Come again, David. San Ignacio, Chalatenango. No, no, no. Cagua. Cagua. Comasagua. 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 Yeah. That's not an Eramon, right? No, Eramon is in Chalate. No. It's in Chalate. So I went there to, to what? Ileana? I forgot. Komasawa. Komasawa. We went to Komasawa. Man, I have pictures. Did you climb it? Did you went to, to the cross? No. Oh, we come went, on. No, we went to the little town. Oh. They were waiting for us. Oh. There, there were like 50 children. <clears throat> My goodness. I have a lot of pictures because uh, I had a lot of beautiful classmates. <laughs> I was already married, but they used to play with me, you know, that was so mean. <laughs> I I was their toy. One of them was a model, you know? Wow. Yeah, wow. just so you can have an idea. Mm -hmm. But out of all the kids in my classroom at the university, there were just three of us with car. <laughs> they were... Now you can picture the idea, right? They were always like speaking on us, you know, so we can give them a ride. We could give them a ride. Anyways, we went to this place. We were able to gather like 10 sacks with rice, beans, and we conduct a campaign to raise funds and bring toys to these kids. There were like five garbage bags like the big ones with toys but i will never forget that experience now that was just a social impact small project you know but to see their faces we cried we cried after that one of us was dressing like um a bunny one of the girls was dressing like a bunny with the whole suit you know whole pink suit and and it was a great time. Now I wondered ever since then. Kids felt really happy because of the toys, but I saw the adults' faces. They were happier because we were giving them something, and nobody used to give something, you know, back in those days. And now that I think about it, we were really brave because back in 2011. There were still a lot of gang members around that area. So I don't know how we did it, but things turned out right. Maybe when you do something good, you know, it's like good things will happen to you. You don't have to worry. I don't know. It was beautiful. So, um, but coming back to this, when we went back to the university and we, on our next class after that, we had to do a, a presentation ring, how we planned everything, how we packed, you know, the beans, the rice, the oil, things that we had, how was the experience and everything. But more importantly, uh, to break down the whole process of planning, um, preparing, executing. And we didn't pay too much attention to the most important thing, which is the impact. But the impact is part of the results. When we said that we had measured the results, he jumped out of his chair and he said, how did you measure the impact? How did you measure the result? And we we're like, oh, we conducted a little quiz, you know, among the participants of the experiment or, or the, the inhabitants of this place why were they happy How, what's their what was their current condition when we arrived and what was the uh, final conditions on on their living how did we impact them but he was like no on a project you have to check results on every stage if you're planning how's your planning doing yeah if you're in pre Preparation, you know, preparing everything and checking that everything is good. That's part of your results checking, you know, making sure that you did a good preparation. Then you start executing and you make sure that you executing 
you're executing well, that everything is going according to the plan. Why is it important? Because you have a deadline, don't you? Every single project has a deadline. So it was important and we didn't consider that. And of course, at the end, you have to, you have to make sure that you're giving results. Now, why am I mentioning this? Because many programs, I'm not gonna say names of programs, that will be not, how did you say contraproducente, Anna Claudia? I can't remember. You found it. Yeah. Who found it last time? I can't remember it. <laughs> Come on, Google. Hurry up. Counterproductive. Come again. Gracias. Counterproductive. Counterproductive. It was another word. You know what's funny? My brain does remember, but not me. Because it wasn't that. <laughs> it was something else. Self-deferring? What? Self-deferring? Self-deferring? Self mm -hmm. Those are terms for your business. Inefficient? Ineffective? Ineffective. Ineffective. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I have this thing in French. I'm sorry. Hold on. Counterproductive is one of them, yes. Self-defeating, self-defeating, wasn't it? The one you gave me before, self-defeating. Yeah. Anyways, so, but I have seen many programs in the government that are amazing programs, thought based on the need, the necessity of people. But it's not easy because you need the funds first and, and, Typical international relations between countries is, it used to be, not anymore. It used to be a, a very, um, how do you say this? Um, when a process is too complex, there's a lot of documentation involved to get the funds from other countries, you know, donations, get donations for social um projects is that it wasn't easy so but but in the end you know uh you have to go through all that but these projects of the government although they were good they didn't have the stage of testing results verifying results i'll give you an example at the end of this module you're not having a final exam, you know, like, good. Inglés Corporativo is giving you the chance of doing the TOEFL preparation, which is an extra, and that's amazing, I have to say. Because that will certify you for sure. If you go to big companies like Aeroman, or you apply to any jobs in Canada, the ones that we were mentioning, or another country, they will demand from you a level testing um, proof, any document, any certification that proves that you have X level, you know, and that's your knowledge. And nowadays, everything is on paper and you should have a backup. That's my advice. So that's good. But many, many courses, many programs, and if they do test, the efficiency or the results of the project or the programs is typically someone who is not prepared to conduct the testings. I have had uh, inspectors, let's say, you know, people uh, outed in me who don't speak English. So is that possible? Can somebody, Gracia, can somebody get to your job and audit your job without being an engineer, I don't know, with experience? Do you think that will be possible? <laughs> like, no way. It's impossible, right? But that happens. It happens. Okay. So that's just, that's just a thought. If there are no measuring of results, then... Everything, every effort you took, it's pointless. That's the word that I was looking for. It's pointless. So this is on page 27 of your workbook. Uh, this topic, page 27. 
and there's a little excerpt about this topic. I'm going to present it. Hold on. Explain the importance of measuring the social impact of a social business. Huh. So we have an excerpt. I need some help. Who wants to read? Thank you, Chair. Good. <clears throat> read this excerpt about measuring social impact, a project that aims to reduce poverty by helping poor people to start businesses needs to show that the participants earn significantly more net income after the intervention that they did before it. Business training or access to credit may not, may not in fact get people out of poverty. Measuring incomes is the only way to know. Simple tracking activities is not enough. You need to track the impacts of those activities. Hmm. Adapted from real good, not feel good. <laughs> I like the name of that. I guess it's an article or a book, but real good, not feel good. Oh. Do you agree with the last statement of the excerpt that measure, let's say, simply tracking activities is not enough? You need to track the impacts of those activities. Why is it important to measure the impact of a social project? As I, I was explaining to you, every stage is important. The last part of it is, 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 is important, but why do you think it's important to measure each stage of the project development, Steve? I, I think it is it's, it's important what is <clears throat> uh, how a plant if you measure or just measure the impact. If uh, what, whatever you want, want to do is necessary to measure the impact. If you want to impact the people, or people in part of um, a community or, or, or something like that, it, it is important. Uh, because if, if you measure and you compare when you begin and when you finish the, the, this, this kind of project or mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. you compare. And, you, and then you will be improved to realize. or change something. Excellent. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Thank you. Uh, in other words, change. I'm sorry. Hold on. Change the plan, not the goal. Not the goal, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, change the plan, not the goal. And, and this in terms of during the, the, the process, you know, when you're in progress of uh, let's say planning and you realize that you're not doing a good planning that you're not considering some factors then you stop you give a bird view of the whole thing you know and you go like mm, wait a minute this will fail this is not good i should include this this and that i need more people i need less people i need more money i, I don't need that much money and so on okay you're executing then you stop and you again another bird view and we're doing good and so on, right? The thing is that if you only evaluate at the end of the project, can you still do something about it? Can you change the outcome? No, too late. You already have the results, so, okay. And that's a waste of time, a waste of money for whoever funded the project, you know, they will all like, but we're, we're done with the sample, so I don't think this will go anywhere. We shouldn't continue funding your project. Let's go with a different project or, and et cetera. So think about this 
thoughts that I have given you and you have given, you know, that you have right now, discuss them with your classmates. I'm going to split you so you can read this again, give your own thoughts and answer these two questions. That's it. So come up with your own conclusions. This will be short, no more than 15 minutes, and we will be giving conclusions, okay? Questions? Okay, for our next act as well, at the same time, let's find this, um, what is it? Terms, this key terms related to measuring impacts of social businesses. And we conclude the class giving all this information really quick, okay? okay. Sounds like a plan? Yeah. Do we have a deal? No. Oh, yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Claudia, come on. Oh, come on, teacher. David, Francisco, let me go. Analyze this. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is good actually. Okay, let's go. Um, Wendy, Wilfredo, if you can join your group, um, only Gracia and Fernando are on that group and they're all alone. So if you can be as listeners, I will appreciate it. Thank you. And think about it. Give our thoughts. Okay. Which page it is? Mm. I got it. Yeah. Yes. Let me share the um, the screen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It says we need to read it and find it. Mm. I think that I feel kind of strange because this type of business it's not so common to develop it like a social business. Most of the time, that is why the NGOs uh, take care of these type of projects, right? Well, I agree at the end that we need to track the impact of the activities because it's the only way we can demonstrate the social business um, impact. In, uh -huh, impact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There is no other way. You It's a must that you need to measure uh, the impact and the changes in people after uh, you make them to be part of this social business entrepreneur. What do you think?
We have the chilling comes. Why it is important to measure the impact of social project? Yeah, I agree with you because we need to to work with the the objective to create or earn money, but create a good impact too. And you know what I also think is that it's important to present at the end um to the the people who uh it's not the word for, they found they provide the funds mm -hmm. for this to work because in social business most of the time it will be donors or yeah. how do you need to look for 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 the money to for start the money yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, I think it's important because at the end you need to to show up the results. Who else is with us? Ah, oh, Eliana is not here. Hey, jabbing, I guess, is not there. Okay. Let's look for the meaning of the other. The other words, I don't know which was uh, here. It is let oh, man, we already we already saw this or not? Having having we look at these words in a previous class? No, mm, no, no. no I, do. I don't remember, but I, I guess not. No, I guess it's in the platform. And I saw it right there. <laughs> okay. Metrics. Let me just double check it. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to switch. How to make this not to be. And yes, stop sharing. I have one. Uh huh. Which one? Mm, a business metric. I will send you through. Are you going to copy it in the? Yeah. Your expenses, and then uh, you the people will be the same. Yes, we need to measure. We need to measure the. But I I, I, I think. It. Sorry. I I got it. Okay, yeah, because only increasing the, the the incomes maybe it's not enough because they can earn more, but they can uh, uh, more expensive too, and there is no solution. They it, it could it is necessary to to do a. Mm -hmm. um, to change habit, uh, to change uh, uh, culture, the uh, attitudes, and uh, but it is uh, uh, so difficult to 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 meet you. But uh, it is a, a good point of uh, a starting point to measure the the incomes. Because uh, it is possible that if you have more <clears throat> incomes, you can uh, go better in your life, in your social, in your uh, social conditions. But uh, the 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 point is that it is necessary to measure. It is the point. It is necessary to measure in, in some way. We need to measure in. in in some way, and we need to have uh, some reference 
some point of uh, comparison, some point of reference to to know. It's a it, yes. it's it's a reference. Yes, if you compare with uh, not only uh, at the end is in the middle and the beginning in the middle and at the end, but you have a um, Try to measure uh, every step that you that you need uh, to take in order to have a, a, a good result uh, in order to make the goal or not. Yes. Mm. I, I remember when the the government did a, um, what is the name of that? The uh, um, reform agraria. Okay, okay. so uh, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we're done. We have the four concepts. And you already discussed the um, two questions, right? Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to send you the four synonyms. That's a great idea to find synonyms about the words. We're almost done. Let me just make sure the other two groups are almost done as well. OK. I found a definition with thrive. Thrive mm -hmm. to grow strongly and vigorously. To grow strongly and vigorously. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I don't know in business or projects. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you succeed, but in a big scale, it's just mm -hmm. you. You. Um, that you imagine, I guess, right? That you will be or better. Mm -hmm. What I was looking is beneficiaries, and I found that it says a person. I'm going to write it because mm -hmm. a person who derives. Beneficiaries, a person who derives a benefit from something especially a trust. Will for life insurance policy. Uh, okay. That's right. I don't know if I made any spell words with you. Sorry. And the last one. Uh -huh. Philanthropy can include donating money to a worthy cause. Ah, okay. I guess we got them all, right? The yeah. the meaning to understand them. What's the what the meaning is?
Okay. So really quick, let's go through the questions. Let's see. I'm not going to talk too much. I just want to hear your conclusions so we can move on with this topic. Let's see. Where are you? Here you are. Okay. So do you agree with the last statement on the excerpt? Um, simply tracking activities is not enough. You need to track the impacts of those activities. Okay, right. I, <laughs> I, I was, uh, uh, we were talking in the, in the, the group, but uh, you need uh, the, uh, we focus on the, on the previous part, and maybe we are lost, we focus on the, Focus on the measuring comes is the only way to know measuring comes, and uh, that part uh, get my my attention. And I there is no part of the final statement. The final statement is simple, simple tracking activities in the mouth. You need to track the impacts of those activities. It is not uh, it is connected from the from the previous part because I I, I was thinking. Uh, measuring income is not the only way. This is the the form that I we so we were talking about in the in the, the group. Mm -hmm. Measuring incomes because uh, if you have more incomes, you can have more expenses. Uh, you need to change habits. Uh, you need to change uh, sure. many things to, to get training, to get support for for only. Incomes is not enough, but uh, <laughs> maybe I was lost because the, the, the last part is, is, is made more sense for me. Simple tracking activities is not enough. Uh -huh. You need to track the impact of those activities. In that case, maybe, maybe yes, because we need to track the, the impact of uh, if the people can... Uh, uh, change her habit or the expenses or something like that in, in that reason or or the the one one of the problem of the people in poverty is that uh, they have uh, too many ch children and uh, there is a, a difficult situation because they don't have the conditions to to deal with that or to give the attention that they, every child needs. And if we don't uh, change that situation, it will be difficult to, to do the, a better job. But uh -huh. if we only took the, the, the two last sentences, it's okay. Simple for a kid, it's not enough. We need to correct the input. Okay. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Okay. Someone else, why is it important to measure the impact of a social project? Why do we, do we need to measure it? For the follow-up teacher, because remember that we are not get used to social business, social business entrepreneur. Most of the time the NGOs are the one taking projects, but the way how they are found Fund fund the money funded. How they found funded. money? How they provide? Not founded. Founded. Mm -hmm. Funded. Okay. Uh, it's not the way how uh, social business entrepreneurs start. So I guess like this uh, is important to measure them because there are venture or donors involved, and sometimes these projects must have a second part or continuation. And it's important to show and track the, the results to get the donations or the uh, 
money. Attracting more investors. Attracting more. Exactly. Remember that if it's a social, they are investing, but it's like, a, I understood this like a donation most of the time. You got it. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. Now, measuring the impact you have on your project or your social interpreter, Mm -hmm. um, we'll give an idea of how good you're doing. Remember what we discussed in the first classes. I mean, when we started talking about this topic about uh, social entrepreneurship, it's, it's a little bit confusing, a little bit, I'm sorry, a little bit confusive because um, as Anna Claudia was saying, you know, it's, it's difficult to understand the difference between a social enterprise and a, and a regular business, but it's very simple in reality just based on the fact that social entrepreneurs look for a common, um, I should say, they look to solve a social problem. That's it. What is the social mm -hmm. problem you're going to solve? And that, that is where you focus on. Depending on how good you're doing on resolving that social necessity, then that's successful your business or your social entrepreneurship is. Mexico is uh, actually scaling up on this um, business model. And there's another one, I think it's Colombia. I can't remember right now. I think it's Colombia. They're like, how do you call that? Not startups, but they are pioneers. They're pioneers on this topic. And this, this is a ramification came from corporate social responsibility, remember? Because there's always been like a fight, a war, let's say, between government and successful enterprises. There was a point where successful enterprises, and I'm saying enterprises because those are huge conglomerates of companies, earning a whole lot of money, becoming richer and richer and richer. And the uh, neo, 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 oh my God, my, my tongue, hold on. Socialism um, premise, the socialism premise is stated that a rich person will only help the poor once they have enough money listen to this and that's a study from 2001 2005 my uncle conducted that study and he determined and i read one of his ex ex excerpts and it said that you know there was a drawing of a rich man throwing money everywhere picture it someone who has enough money but that's a lie that's an illusion <laughs> When a rich person will throw their money, you know, they have enough. Okay, I have enough money. Uh, I don't need all this. Let's give the money away. It was an illusion. But Mr. Beast is making it something real. <laughs> you know who's Mr. Beast? The YouTuber, Anna Claudia. Oh, my God, Anna Claudia, we're outdated. You need exactly. kids. You need kids in your life. I don't know if it's a, a boy, a young man is a, a guy that, yeah but but it's like uh i don't know if he has too much tattoos i don't know i saw one no <laughs> if you see him you won't believe that's him mm -hmm. just like that you want you will go like what this guy is mr best because he started making videos uh giving money a hundred bucks two hundred dollars to panhandlers to people in poverty helping them and a lot of people started donating money to help him on his costs. So all of his videos are about this, giving away money. He even came up with a game, a game where you had to put your finger on your cell phone. He created an app. You download the app and on, what is it? June 30th, June 30th, whoever wants to download the app and put the finger on will win the bucket you know and the bucket was like 10 million dollars so for 24 hours if you hold your finger for 24 hours without moving it you may win the the 10 million dollars and there were thousands millions of people down you know holding their fingers 
just look go ahead and google it you're gonna have fun watching that video because a lot of them fail anyways but going back to the point uh, i forgot what i was saying <laughs> so the socialism idea was that rich people can give away their money whenever they have enough money now mm -hmm. it's kind of happening but what is happening now is that you have the regular business model their scaling capability listen to this their scaling mm -hmm. capability how a business grows and on the other hand now you have the social entrepreneurs someone who had an idea to remediate a social problem but doesn't have the funds so mm -hmm. companies are helping them they're founding they're donating money to their cause to solve this social problem and it's, a, it's, it's just a different way of corporate social responsibility program. Another way of staying away from taxes, let's say, I don't know. Tomorrow we will get going deep on that topic really quick. Um, tell me. Um, definitions, let's go with the first one, metrics. Who can tell me in your own words uh, what are metrics? regarding measuring the impacts of social businesses? Mm, for me, teacher, is a method mm -hmm. and how you, you can measure a project or something and you want to know the results. For example? Mm, for example, a metric. So uh, uh, what would be a synonym of metric, guys? Measures. All measure? the statistics you see in the social media. What about parameters? Mm -hmm. Parameters, maybe. Mm -hmm. Elena? Metric. Yeah. Yeah. Parameters. No? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, but for example, let's say you have a. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Wait! 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 You have a course, uh, an English course for people in poverty in the department of Zacatecoluca and you're benefiting a hundred kids. What will be your parameter at the end of the course? How many kids you talk convinced? <laughs> no, how many kids speak English at the end of the course? At the end uh -huh. yeah uh-huh <laughs> yeah. even even more specific you know how many kids are able to sustain a conversation for five minutes of that of that uh hundred you said hundred out of the hundred mm -hmm. 80 percent you 80. have that you have that metric for example that, that's you have, your metric that that hundred is your like your base and how many you you that and how many learn <laughs> at the end of the course is your your result your parameter like percent, percentage your you percentage say? yes yeah. exactly that's clearly your parameter a metric thrive thank you thrive thrive uh -huh. will be a quantitative uh metrics uh could be a quantitative also for example uh maybe the sums of something or or the sums of results the total yeah it could be the total mm. okay maybe the example that you placed of the kids maybe mm -hmm. like design a, an exam an oral and written exam and according to the general average of the kids then that will be the parameter or the metric. Cool. That, that's it. That's it. Philanthropy. Philanthropy. The desire to promote the welfare of others expressed especially by the, by the generous donation of money to good causes or the altruistic concern for human welfare and advancement. Was Rico Macpato a philanthropy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. No, he wasn't. Definitely, no. Oh, 
<laughs> he was stingy, man. And the last one, beneficiaries. Beneficiaries. People who gets the beneficiary of something. The benefit. benefit of something. Uh huh. Okay, you got it. Well, that's it. This was good, actually. Um, tomorrow we will close that topic. Remember again. Um, well. Gracias. Was asking me when is the last day to finish your platform. Uh, let's call. Let's call it Monday. Let's call it Monday. By Monday, you should make sure that all of your platform exercises are finished. And the three point five. They yes. fixed it. Thank you, Ana Claudia. They fixed it already. So you can go ahead and and, and move on with three point five on your platform. I'll check it once we finish the class. I'll stay here for a few minutes uh, while I upload the video. Make sure everything is working accordingly, okay? And, uh, and um, Gracia, will you stay with me 10 minutes? No, teacher. Okay. Yes, yeah. yeah, she said yes. Okay. <laughs> she would say anyway. I don't know what everybody has with the 10 minutes. I mean, it's just 10 minutes. Okay. I'll see you on tomorrow. Sorry. Tomorrow, okay. Ana Claudia oh, Gonzalez. That's good. <laughs> good night, teacher. Good night, something Monday. Thank you. I know. Sorry, guys. <laughs> David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Teacher, good night. Good night. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Dora. Dora. I see you. Okay. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Present. Good night. Gracia Elizabeth Diaz Vasquez. Present. Good night. Oh, wait. No. <laughs> Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present. <laughs> Sorry, Present. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Thank you. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejia. Present, teacher. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Left again. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Thank you. Juan Miguel Brown Mejia. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present is share. Doras right on, on chat. She wrote, yeah, she texted she us. She has Thank a you. problem with her microphone. It's okay, Dora. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. She left. And William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. See you tomorrow. But yeah. Hmm. Okay. Lately, I've been. I've been. What, what is it? Lately, I've been. I've been losing sleep. Yeah. But no, I'm. I've been thinking. I've been doing something with everybody, and I don't know if I should do it with you. I'm afraid. I'm 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 scared of doing this with you because you're too smart. Okay. It's the minute okay. <laughs> I didn't want to admit it, but now that you mention it. <laughs> so was it industrial engineering that, that you started? No, chemical engineering. Chemical engineering? What? <laughs> so you can you can fabricate drugs? Yeah. <laughs> really? Did you like Breaking Bad? <laughs> I I haven't watched it. What? <laughs> you cannot call a chemical engineer if you haven't watched Breaking Bad. Okay, then I'm not a chemical engineer yet. <laughs> you should give it a try. I don't know. It's. I did I like give it. it a try, but I did give it a try, but I didn't like it. Really? Okay. Yeah, you're a girl. I mean, you don't like those things. Uh, what else could you like? Hmm. You like sci-fi? Yeah, I do. Okay. Sci-fi will be then. Let's see. Uh, you know, when you go to an interview, the common thing is for the interviewer, if it is a well-trained interviewer, he will throw you um, brain teasers. Brain teasers are just questions that take you out of your comfort zone. I guess you're familiar with those terms, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's what they will do. 
And sometimes you can get stuck with stupid questions, you know, but one that I used to use a lot and I liked a lot is just challenging uh, the interviewers. I'm sorry. The interviewee. Interviewees is a way to say it, but applicants, let's say, sounds better. Oh my God, it's raining. I love that. Is it raining where you are? Yeah, it is raining. Oh my God, that's beautiful. Okay, talk to me. What have you heard about space travel? One, two, three. It's the it. so space travel. Uh, it regards uh, traveling through space space in the outer space and I have heard uh, uh, well at least we have been to the moon uh, we have been uh, since then since the last century uh, humanity has gone to outer space and we have traveled as far as the moon but nowadays we only have special uh, objects <laughs> okay, sorry, finish your idea. We only have spatial objects. Yeah, uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, like, have you heard of Hubble? Apollo? No, Hubble. Oh, the it Hubble, yeah. Yeah, it recently got an image of, a, like, th there is a, a wall of galaxies. And uh -huh. behind that wall of galaxies, there is another wall of galaxies, which give, like, a... a impression uh, an idea no 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 it, it is against the big bang theory or oh. at least what we have so far understood about the universe because mm -hmm. it, uh it like the light or the time to travel from where they are up to here is more than what what has been measured to be the beginning of the universe oh my so god <laughs> that's unmeasurable distances yeah. It's crazy. I mean, if you think about it, uh, well, by the way, it wasn't the Hubble, it was the James Webb oh, okay. uh, uh -huh, telescope, which is amazing as well. Last year, we went, every year we have um, a retirement. I don't know how to say that. I still, it's a convivencia. It's a retirement day weekend, I don't know, from church. And for the first time, they included scientific well the second time they included scientific um speeches among because every year we watch a video you know that Kiko Arguello is the founder of, of the church uh prepares and one of them one of the initiators of our church passed away and she was very um she was a scientist believer of God and a scientist so when she discovered this thing you know that the universe what you're saying is even bigger than what we thought she wrote a book she started writing a book many years ago and she concluded it before she passed away so she made a video i'll try to get it and send it to you but it's, it's, it's you're gonna blow your mind i mean it's the video starts here you know Salvador, and it starts flying across going to the space, then going out of space, as you said, going out of our galaxy, and it keeps moving, you know, until there's no form, there's no shape, there's nothing. And and it starts explaining how, how small we are. I mean, oh my God. It feels, we're nothing. It reminded me of uh, Men in Black. The ending of Men in Black three i think or the one i can't oh, remember yeah. i think it is the first one uh -huh. or yeah where th there are some no it's the second one i just remember it's the second one they go like this this kid has no clue of what's going on right and they open the locker <laughs> it's crazy yeah so that that's too much to swallow that's too much to swallow okay um but what's your favorite movie? We have two minutes. <laughs> um, I would say 
it is uh, in time. One of my favorite movies is in time. Have you Justin, have you have you of course. It? Yeah, talk to me about any sci-fi movie, and I have seen it. Justin, and have you seen Marlake? Transcendence? What? Transcendence. Transcendence. With, with um, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Most likely, I have seen it, but I can't remember the name. Do you know what's funny? Some movies, I I I learned them or I memorized them in, with their uh, name in Spanish, because translation of movie names <laughs> sucks. You know, when they move them from English to Spanish, you go like, what? That, that has Como, nothing to do. <laughs> like a todo gas. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and let's not talk about Spain, okay? <laughs> That's yeah, so funny. Is a very good movie. And then adventure movie, I I'm not getting the name again. Repeat. Transcendence. Trans oh, Transcendence. Transcendence. Yes, yes. He transfers the information to another brain. And what about replicas? Yeah. It's That's even good. better. Keanu Reeves, right? Keanu Reeves. Oh my God. Yeah, but my favorite movie of all times will always be Interstellar. Interstellar is like, that. That surpassed. Uh, that went beyond. Prometeo. Oh, Prometheus. It it was the prequel to. I can't remember uh, the name of the Alien? sequel. Uh huh. Yeah, it's it's the prequel of Alien, right? And there's a second part I remember. I can remember, but the beginning of Prometheus is like it makes you think a lot, you know. Yeah. Wow. And then, but in Tesselar is like they included images of real space, you know. And it's like I went to the theater to to watch it. I left the theater even in <laughs> shock, you know. My wife was like carrying me home. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. Wow. So. Yeah, hey, we have something in common. I like that. That the sci-fi is like the best thing that could ever happen to to humanity from my my point of view because it makes humans more creative. It helps creativity, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Steve Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for staying with me. I'll see you tomorrow. Text me if you need me, okay? Okay. Good, Thank good you. night. Good night. Bye bye.